Welcome to the Continuum Lab. In this video I'm going to show you my secret to making breath pressure sensors for my different MIDI wind instrument controllers by building and demonstrating three different designs including this very special sensor configuration here which is bi-directional. These sensors are super cheap to make because I use mostly recycled materials and very simple components. They're based on my open horn MIDI system project and as such they are very sensitive and responsive. I'm going to start with the truly minimalist sensor setup. For this I'm going to need a few simple things. First of all some corrugated cardboard. This is going to form the basic structure that holds everything together. Next I'll need a water balloon. Balloons make great membranes for different kinds of sensors. Also, kids' toy balloons can be trusted to be non-toxic, which I think is important when making breath sensors. I also use this food-grade silicone tube. The sensor in this breath sensor setup is the CNY70. I use my custom CNY70 sensor module for this, which makes it really simple to use. The last thing I need is a piece of plastic. It also needs to be food-grade, so I'm recycling it from this food container. I only need a small piece, so I'll hold on to this lip for use in future prototypes. The size of the piece depends on the size of your balloon. The plastic disc goes inside the water balloon, so I fold it down the middle so that I can more easily fit it in. Then unfold it inside the balloon. There. The disc holds the balloon in a flat shape so that the expansion when I blow in the balloon happens along one well-defined axis, which I will then be able to measure with the CNY70 like this. Now I just need to make a simple structure to hold everything into place. Corrugated cardboard is easy to fold in predictable patterns by crushing one layer along the corrugation where you want the fold to be. This kind of construction is surprisingly strong. I make a rectangular shape like this. One side of it is defined by the necessary distance between balloon and sensor. That side of my rectangle is about 15 millimeters. The length of the other side depends on the size of your balloon and plastic disc, because they need to fit inside the rectangle, like this. See how that works? Now let's glue the sensor into place. Hot glue is fast and offers a relatively strong bond. Also, as you will see, it's quite easy to remove from the sensor module once I'm done with this test. Okay, time to put everything together. I could glue the rectangle shut, but this rubber band does the job just fine and allows me to access the sensor afterwards non-destructively. The final touch is an exit hole for the air pressure. Just cut a small hole, smaller than the inside diameter of the tube, in the side of the tube like this. Now I can blow continuously in the tube and vary the balloon expansion by blowing harder or softer. This breath sensor is done. Now we need to connect it to the microcontroller to be able to read the CNY70's output. Of course I used one of my sensor modules for this build, so all I need to do is plug it into my Teensy LC breakout board and we're good to go. Then I put some simple code onto it for the initial test. This code just outputs the reading straight to serial. Readings are good. Sensitivity is good. Now let's try something more fun. Here's a slightly more advanced bit of code which takes the readings from the last example, maps them onto MIDI range and then outputs them to MIDI. Upload that, open up the Yoshimi synthesizer and connect everything together with Jack. Let's see if it works. Yes, it works just fine. Now, if I was to use this in an instrument, I would include a filtering function in the code. But for this proof of concept, it's fine the way it is. So that's pretty much as cheap and simple as it gets for a fully functional breath sensor. Uh, it's also quite a compact design, which of course is practical if you want to try to fit it inside an instrument. So with a bit of care and tweaking, this sensor can be quite good. But there are of course other designs which offer superior sensitivity and responsiveness. But before I go on with those, um, I want to share some news with you. As of this week, I'm offering a workshop which covers the designs from this video, plus other instruments, sensors, techniques, and much, much more. As part of this new plan, I'm also getting ready to set up a webshop where I will be selling kits with my custom electronics, including everything you need for those who want to follow along with the videos and build their own instruments. These kits include important updates to the Teensy LC breakout board and the sensor modules that I'm currently using. I'm still waiting for a lot of these materials to arrive and as soon as they do I will start a new series of build videos using the new hardware. So expect more on that soon. Anyway, on with the building. 
So the next kind of sensor is a little bit more complex to make, but perhaps also a little bit more stable and sensitive. This sensor uses the BPW34 photodiode paired with a 3mm LED. Both are mounted in my practical modules together with the necessary circuits and resistors. This breadth sensor setup has a larger pressure chamber, which I will make out of this lid. Again, just like in the previous setup, this is a food grade item. The membrane in this breadth sensor is also made out of a balloon and we will also need a rubber band. The pressure chamber will need to have two tubes going into it, a large one as the entry tube and a slightly smaller one for the exit. So I will also need to make two holes in the bottom of the chamber. Let's find a suitable drill bit. I use a drill which is slightly smaller than the silicone tube so that the seal between the chamber As I was saying, the tube should be larger than the hole in the chamber, which will help to give a good hermetic seal. Everything is the same for the smaller tube, except smaller. Smaller tube, smaller drill, smaller hole. There. Now it's time for the membrane. Cut off the end of the balloon like this. Then stretch it over the pressure chamber like this. The result should look something like this. Next up, attach the modules with the sensor and the LED. Simply line them up across from each other and then stretch a rubber band around the whole assembly like this. Let me just quickly plug that in so you can see how it works. The light from the LED falls onto the BPW34, but as the balloon membrane expands, it casts a shadow onto the sensor. But because this is an optical sensor, we also need to block ambient light so that it doesn't mess with our readings. Let's get out some cardboard for that. Like in the previous sensor, we will crush the corrugation to help with our bends, but this time we do it all the way down, because what we want is to roll this piece of cardboard around our pressure chamber setup in this kind of tube shape. Again, hold everything together with a couple of rubber bands and we're done. This is what it looks like all assembled. Now we'll put the same code from before on there, and then let's see how it works. Readings are good. Sensitivity and responsiveness are also good. Cool! So now let's get out our MIDI code from before. I just need to adjust the minimum and maximum values on this mapping function to fit the new setup and then we're good to go. Now we can get out the Yoshimi synthesizer, connect the sensor to it via jack and try it out. Yes, that works great! This breath sensor is quite a bit more sensitive and responsive than the previous one, which is why this is my go-to solution for breath sensors on my instrument prototypes. The other reason why I really like the setup is that it's great for workshops. You can clearly see the shadow gradually covering the sensor, and so the functionality of the sensor is plainly visible, which is very didactic. The CNY70, which I used in the previous sensor setup, uh, is arguably a little easier to use, but it uses uh, invisible infrared light, and so it's a little bit less useful for demonstration purposes. The final sensor that I want to show you is the one that I teased at the beginning, which measures both positive and negative pressure. Think of a harmonica which is able to play different notes depending on the direction of the airflow through it. This sensor setup combines the pressure chamber concept from the second sensor with the CNY70 sensor module from the first one. So I'm going to reuse this sensor module. As I mentioned, it's not hard to peel the glue off of the back of the module. I won't be needing the BPW34 or the LED, and this black balloon is no good either. The CNY70 senses reflection, so let's get a balloon in a more reflective color. Snip off the end and stretch the balloon over the pressure chamber, securing it with a rubber band just like before. As you can see, it responds quite well to both positive and negative pressure. The CNY70 needs to sit in front of the membrane like this, so just like for the other setups, I will use a cardboard structure to hold everything in place. I quickly reassemble my tube shape from before, and then I cut out an extra piece large enough to cover the end of it completely. This will be the base of the sensor setup, so then I glue the sensor to the base, and then the base to the tube itself, like this. And we're done. That was quick, mostly because the basic concepts and structures were brought over from the two previous builds. So let's try to upload the basic code from before and see how it works. Hmm, interesting. The positive pressure part of the reading is not getting much resolution. The negative side works much better. That means that the sensor and membrane are probably too close together. I'll pull on the whole pressure chamber assembly like this to get it a bit further away from the sensor. Okay, now it's much better. 
with a neutral reading of around 360 and plenty of resolution both on the positive and negative sides, this should work just fine. Now let's put in some MIDI functionality. I had to expand the code from the other two builds so that this section of code is used if the reading is below this threshold here, while this other part is used if the reading is above this other threshold here, corresponding to the positive and negative pressure ranges. So let's fire up the Yoshimi synthesizer once again, connect everything and see if it all works. It does indeed work just fine. Positive and negative pressure are being read correctly and independently, and the sensitivity of both is very good. Cool. And that's it. I hope you can see that it's not actually that hard to make a very cool and functional breath pressure sensor. I've been designing and building these for years as part of my open horn MIDI system, and uh, these are some of my favorite designs. I hope you found them useful. If you're interested in learning more about DIY sensors and how to make your own MIDI controllers, then make sure you subscribe to this channel here at Continuum Lab and follow me over on Instagram, also at Continuum Lab, for more news on my workshops, experiments and prototypes. Take care until next time and I'll see you in the Continuum.